Today I'm in a car, to begin with anyway, just for a change, and I'm visiting a team who know all about sound and how to get rid of it. By now you all know about Allen's Danish diesel engine. It's simple, reliable, but it likes to reassure you that it's still there by being seriously vocal. Obviously so when bare and uncovered, but also when inside it's foam lined, wooden fiberglass box cowling. I want to limit the extent to which I drive Allen's inhabitants deaf or insane or both. So I'm visiting the soundproofing guys at SRU Insulation. They kindly offered to host me for an hour or so, give some advice and also supply me with some rolls of mass loaded vinyl matting. They sell a whole range of boards, void fill, coverings, tapes and so on, but I had my eye on something called tech sound and began by outlining my needs to Lloyd, the boss. Um, the engine bay is in the main cabin and that of course means that it's, it's, a, it's a one and a half uh, litre diesel. Um, it's a pretty well uh, uh, marinized engine but it's still pretty noisy. Yeah. Um, and so you, can, you do a pretty good job with sort of basic um, bay lining with sort of uh, cheaper foams and that sort of thing, but I just realised that it's nowhere near up to the job of dampening, particularly the low, uh, the low frequencies. The low, the of low frequencies. So, spoken to my brother, who's a marine engineer, and he just says you just need mass. Yeah. Um, so this is the Tech 100, is it? Yes. Yeah, so, so this is the Tech Sound 100. Yeah. Um, you get two versions: the non-adhesive, and this is the self-adhesive version. Mm -hmm. So this one is very easy. You just peel off the film and you stick it on the wall, mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like it's exactly what you need. Uh, this um, another name for this is mass loaded vinyl mm -hmm. so it's just heavy it's just a very heavy product uh, another way to describe it is it's like lead pretty much short of lining the engine bay and cowling with lead this stuff promises the next best thing and it's remarkably easy to curve conform and handle I had some more questions um, the first one is if you have an air gap so for instance um, if you weren't able to get a perfect um, say you're talking about a wall or, or, or a gel coat surface or something like that and there was a void what sort of um, acoustic effect will that have can that can that sort of undo the work that it's doing mm -hmm. so the sound can echo and reverberate through there right um, so ideally no there shouldn't be any any gaps behind this and I'm guessing in particular to stop this moving because if, the, if this was to vibrate itself it, it could then create its own sound it, ex exactly yeah, yeah. was this uh, it's, it's a pretty you know, heavy product. Um, so if, if this was to be vibrating on a wall, it will drive you crazy. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Also doubling up, um, can you go even thicker to sort of create your own 200 level by just adding stacks? Yes, or, yeah. so you can double down, triple down, whatever down. Mm -hmm. Just bear in mind that um, you don't get twice the performance. Mm. So for every time you double down, you get 50% extra. So. Also, you mentioned that there was another sort of similar-ish sort of mass yeah. um, mass board or, or mass uh, roll. What's the benefit of going with Tech Sound, like a, you know the brand name, as opposed to a, sort of a non-brand? A lot of our installers, so we have six, seven teams doing installations throughout London and on the south of England, and the majority of them actually prefer the uh, the alternative product. Uh, one because it comes with a lot less packaging. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a bit more rigid, so it's not as flexible as a Tech Sound. Because imagine trying to put this very flexible roll on a wall on the ceiling, it's going to fall over your wall. For me, actually, the, flexi the flexibility is going to be re very useful because I've got curved areas of the bay, exactly. which would be great for me. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. if you're a curved area, that mm -hmm. this would be better for you. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, it's going on a flat wall. Yeah. So you want something that's going to hold itself up. Mm -hmm. Instead of merely retailing goods, SRU can facilitate complex fittings for both business and consumers, but also save people from wasting everyone's time in buying the wrong product. So uh, give tons of advice before someone commits to, to a system. And then you screw your plaster boards or your DBX boards into these uh, channels. And what these basically do, they decouple your uh, old ceiling from your Alan ceiling. naturally won't have ceilings nor plasterboard walls, but I took the opportunity to saturate my knowledge sponge for the future. And Lloyd gave me a hand loading up the car with the deceptively heavy vinyl rolls, plus some purpose-made spray adhesive. Little gaps between joins can undo all the good this low frequency reduction matting offers, so using acoustic tape can help sort that problem out. Somehow the hire car with its particularly gutless engine did manage to deliver both me and my new tech sound to the yard, and I identified the first victim to be subjected to treatment with the vinyl roll. This is the fiberglass standing platform that sits behind the engine cover, over the exhaust pipe and steering control rod, and it's reinforced and stiffened with some carbon fibre. Initially, I lined it with about an inch of closed cell acoustic foam and then coated that with foil tape to reflect light and heat, plus give it a wipe clean surface. 
This is not an empirical observation, but it was doing about as much good as staring meaningfully at the bare fiberglass, casting a spell on it, tapping on it three times theatrically, and then expecting it to repel unwanted sound waves. So it all came off. At least the foil tape was a high performer. After two years, the adhesive was so sticky still that it refused to release from my gloves, my sleeves, my everything. Foil and foam finally conquered, it was time for my new tech sound. I'm going to start off with a single layer, see what performance we get, bearing in mind that it claims a reduction of around 30 decibels, although not at all at the lowest frequencies. I know it might seem overdramatic, but even smaller sections of the mat are heavy, and tend to flop around as you try and position and cut it. For that reason I decided to divide up this roll into roughly correct pieces first, before even thinking about removing the protective film over the monstrously strong adhesive. I think for more intricate, smaller shapes with lots of cuts, I probably use the non-adhesive back version of the mat, and using a combination of spray or mastic adhesive as I go along, avoid a sticky uncontrollable mess. Given the density, you'd think that the mat would be tricky to cut. Not so. Even though I thought that I'd need these old serrated Kevlar shears, they were probably overkill, and I found that extra long length wallpaper scissors did fine, and were better at straight lines. So now that the 40 or so kilos of excess matting could be put aside, on with the fitting. During a test with an offcut, moments before this footage was made, I narrowly escaped with my life as I began peeling the film and adhering rather too casually, and once a section had stuck down, it was not moving without a fight, so getting things square and without bridging or voids wasn't happening. Having learned from that, I did all the folding, bending and gap punching first, to allow for rivet heads, and then sliced the backing film into sections so I could fit the mat in a dignified manner. That all went remarkably well, and I left plenty of extra mat around the edge so it could be sliced off afterwards. Any miscalculations could mean a gap if I cut prematurely, and all the booming din of Alan's engine would be free to escape. Here's the slicing technique I used on the edge when I was doing one of the main vertical sides of the engine cover. I found cutting on the downward stroke caused a distortion wave to the mat, which Alan would probably not consider acceptable but I found the upward stroke with a sharp blade did the job. I can assure you that things will not be getting more exciting as I edged the edges with black edging tape and then kept it all in one place with foil tape because the combination of fearsome adhesive and a thin conforming foil makes that super useful. I'm waiting for a delivery of new extra wide flashing tape but that will go on here so again we will have a heat reflective wipe clean surface. To further enthuse you the wallpaper scissors make a cameo appearance. This is the moulding that came originally with Alan, and rises up just behind the platform I just did, and it fits onto the seating, plus has a gap for now that allows the emergency tiller to slot onto the top of the rudder shaft. The hole will need to be soundproofed, but made removable in case the manual tiller is needed. I'm tech sounding, which on reflection probably isn't a valid verb, the outside of the fiberglass so it can still screw down onto its mounting. Before any sticking can occur, it needs sanding back as the gel coat is waxy, and then once again I can deploy a similar technique with the pre-cut and shape section of matting. I could have used a brand new section from the roll, but I think a tightly butted join plus overlap on a second layer will be fine, and less wasteful with fewer offcuts left over. I wasn't quite sure about whether I was supposed to do something with it, but on the non-adhesive side of the mat, the side with the logo and branding on, there's another transparent film on it. But if you try and remove that, it refuses and stretches and rips messily, so I left it. Seems happy enough. I'm thinking probably two layers, so what a Maverick insulator would call Tech Sound 200, but I'll do a decibels test first once all screw back together again. There's no point adding dozens more kilograms in weight if this does a good job. Flipped over, the edges have plenty of spare once again, and I can go around and carefully slice the extra off, which you'll agree is quite satisfying. What better trigger could there be for you to head to my website or a bookstore and order my life-affirming books? Shirts, caps, stickers. Bye.